Well, now what we need to do is this. We need to now go through our table, which is on page 8. So you'll see it on the page 8 of your handout that you can have. It's got, with the help of the instructing teacher, fill out the table of the total water bug survey results. So this is how we, this is how this is going to work basically. We've deep netted and we've got all our bugs in this tray. We've sorted them. And basically what I'm going to do now is fill in that table on page eight with you. So this method of sampling uh, macro invertebrates shows us how healthy is the ecosystem, the aquatic freshwater ecosystem that we are looking at today. They are a very important indicator because macro invertebrates basically uh, come in two types. We break them in high dirt, high dew or high dissolved oxygen and low dissolved oxygen. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our shrimp here and dragonflies, which are gill breathers. High dissolved oxygen, they need a minimum of 60%. Hold on. They need a minimum of 60% oxygen, otherwise they'll die. And the guys on the right hand side here, the beetle and the back swimmers can fly in and out. They're trapped surface here, with like a silver air bubble. They use that to breathe in a pond and they'll feed on whatever they find and then they can fly off pond to pond. They don't really tell us much about whether there's enough dissolved oxygen or not. These guys tell us whether there's enough dissolved oxygen, they tell us the full story. If there's dissolved oxygen, there's going to be plants, there's plants, the water's going to be clear, and so on and so on. So they tell us um, the abiotic and biotic uh, factors by looking at these guys. Okay, so let's have a look. All right, so now we're going to have a look at what we call. I'm going to stir my little samples up. Okay, we've got a bunch of sticks. You might think these are just sticks. It's camouflage, that's their behavioral and structural adaptation at surviving in this environment. You can see this guy trying to wiggle and get out. That is called a caddis fly larvae. There's three of them. They hide in sticks and they're filter feeders. They get takeaway food every day, we call them. And basically when they outgrow their stick, they'll get another stick. Okay, so they don't swim in the open water. There's another one in here. There is, there's another one in here. So there's a whole bunch of them. Basically, we've sorted them together. There they are, popping out. Okay. Now, how many did we catch on our sheet? We need to find. Okay. Back swimmers, we didn't get any. So, we're going to say zero. But caddis fly larvae, there is three in there that are, that are live specimens. Three caddis fly larvae. Now, this column here... We're going to put our abundance of each, similar to the birds, of each species. This column here, circle SR, is a sensitivity rating score. Scientists give each bug, a or macroinvertebrate we should call them, each water bug, a score according to how sensitive it is to pollution, to oxygen levels. For example, mayfly nymphs are the most sensitive to dropping oxygen levels if it drops below 60% which is that magic number, 60%, they're the first to go. So seeing them in a pond or a river tells you that the oxygen levels have to be above 60%, otherwise they'll be the first to go. They're also sensitive to pollution and pollutants, etc. So having a high score means you're a very sensitive water bug. Having a low score like this guy here means you can live, even if it drops below 60% oxygen, you can survive. Or if it's highly polluted water, you're more likely to survive. That's how this column it's very important that you understand how this column works and why they use this score. So we'll just keep going now. Caddis fly three. Here's the next bug. Okay. This beautiful bug here is a damselfly nymph. It's got gills, three feathery projections at the tail. It breathes by shaking its tail feather. Okay, excuse the pun, but that's basically how it breathes. It's a cousin of a dragonfly, nymph. Dragonflies will actually eat these guys. And these guys come in green and brown, depending on what their background is, for camouflage. Okay, so how many of those did we catch? We caught one of those. Next one is my favorite. It is a dragonfly nymph. This guy's a predator, okay? Dragonfly nymphs have a jaw that can come out pretty much almost the length of their body in two hundredths of a second and they can eat 
other macroinvertebrates like damselflies. They've got abdomen gills, which basically means they're taking water from their backside and they breathe, the gills are internal gills. Okay, and they can shoot it out like a jet. That's how they move around and propel themselves. They'll live up to two years underwater and after two years, around two years, they will climb on a reed and metamorphosize, which is an ancient Greek word for change, and they become a dragonfly, only for about two weeks or so, enough to lay their eggs and breed, and then they're gone. How many of those did we get? We got one of those. Next one is shrimp. Did we get shrimp? We sure did. There is hundreds of shrimp in that lake. There's, this is what they look like. We began sorting them, but because there was a hundred plus, we just stopped estimating them. We just said a hundred plus. There was just too many. So that's how they look like. This is a bigger version of them as well. See-through body, two beady eyes, see-through body camouflage. Their gills are on their abdomen, on their tummy, hair-like flagella that they move around. And that's how they get the oxygen. If it drops below 60%, they're gone as well. How many of those did we get? We got 100 plus. Okay. Next bug. What else did we get? Here we go. These guys, the most sensitive water bug out of all, okay, is a mayfly nymph. It's got three tails in the back. They are tiny. There'll be a picture there next to you to show you a bigger version of them, but they've got three tails. I'll see if I can lift it up and zoom in a little bit. There's three tails in the back, and they have gills. They have gills to the side, just on the sides here. But they looks like a skirt. Some people say it looks like a skirt, but they just shimmy back and forth. But that's their gills. Very sensitive water bug. Finding them here is good news in terms of the health of the ecosystem. Let's see. So John, what about zero? Zero for leech, and we got four of those. Very good. Okay, moving on. What else did we get? Next one is a pond snail. I didn't get a bigger sample of this, but we should have seen. Okay, anyways, there's a pond snail here. Okay, just one pond snail, slowest resident of the pond. He's got a shell, he moves around. Not, you know, telling us a great deal about water quality, but we'll put one there. Okay, next one is these guys, some people go, they look like nits. Ugh, they look like nits, but they're not nits. Okay? They are boatmen. They've got a little, little, if you look closely, they've got little oars to the side, and there was hundreds of them there as well. Basically, water boatmen. So, beetle zero, water boatmen, we're going to say 100 plus. You can put 100 plus, I don't have plus there. Next one is the water mite. Okay, this guy's a par this these guys I should say are parasites. Okay, here they are. Water mites, they are red because they've been sucking on fish blood. That's why they go bright red. Here they are. I'll see if I can lift them up a little bit. Okay, here they are. Little water mites. And there is a lot of them as well. We sorted a few of them. Okay, so how many? Did we get? We're going to say around 20 water mites. No water scorpions. Not lucky enough to see those today. No water spiders, no water treaders, no worms. However, we do have a mosquito fish. Here is a mosquito fish. Okay, this is what they look like. There was also lots of them. Mosquito fish is an introduced species. It can survive in many different types of environments. Um, they don't tell us much about water quality. There was a hundred plus of these. Okay, so we're going to estimate them at a hundred plus. Okay, other, there was nothing. Right, so now this is what we need to do. We need to add up our water bugs that we saw. So it says total bug species, different species called, known as taxa richness. Okay, so we add up all our water bugs. So we got caddisfly one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we caught nine different species. So we write number nine in here. Okay. Total sensitivity rating. This is the pollution index, and the scientists give them a score. That column. 
will be, we've got to add up all the points. So 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 7 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 1 gives us a grand total of 44 points. Okay. Now calculate the signal score, SS, equals pollution index, which is a column B, divided by a tax richness, column A, gives us a grand signal score of 4.9 for this lake and for this ecosystem. What does that mean? Well, we take our 4.9 and basically now we have to interpret our results using the unweighted signal score. Using your signal score to determine a pollution rating. Okay, anything above three and a half is a healthy habitat. That's where we are. Okay, now it says a pollution indicator graph. We need to complete this indicator graph using our signal score and tax richness. To plot a point, so our tax richness was around 9, which was about here, let's say, going up, meeting a signal score of 4.9, which would be around here somewhere. So they meet in this corner here, which would be quad 1. It would tell us that it's a very good ecosystem according to our bugs. So that's how we use and measure abundance and distribution of macroinvertebrates. Very important, freshwater water bugs.